Need a spreadsheet to manage incoming inventory? We've created an inventory management spreadsheet template in Excel and Google Sheets to manage material inflows and the products they create. Our inventory management spreadsheet template includes a ledger to track orders and inventory levels for both materials and products produced. Dashboards then visualize the most important metrics related to total inventory value, expiration dates, materials most in demand, and maximum versus minimum order intakes. Here's how to use the inventory management spreadsheet template we created to easily manage and visualize material inventory levels. Okay, so let's say a restaurant here wants to use this spreadsheet to manage the inventory of a new burger joint. On the Fields tab, customize the name of the report, common status types of material orders, and inputs to assess the quality of inventory in stock, since food spoilage is a major part of a restaurant's inventory checkups. Storage locations, such as commercial refrigerators, freezers, and backstock shelves can be specified all the way down to the aisle sector, or shelf name. Use custom IDs to identify these locations later. Last, enter the material SKUs of your beef, cheese, buns, lettuce, and pickles, because we can't forget pickles. I love pickles. Then, enter the project SKUs for your menu items, along with the item's name, unit, and a description. For example, the units for beef could be pounds or patties, while tomatoes would be kilograms. If you need to add more rows for additional locations or SKUs, add them above the gray borderline of each section. Finally, the Vendor Fields tab accounts for frequently used vendors and their most relevant information. When you order from your food supplier, an order can contain many items. So, when a new order of materials is received, enter the order number in the first column, and the order row appears in yellow. Underneath it, all the material SKUs of the ingredients like tomatoes, beef, buns, and pickles, can't forget those pickles, can be listed along with the quantity of each ingredient ordered and their unit price. On the order row, fill out the rest of the order information, such as order date and status, shipped date, any shipper fees, tracking number, order arrival date, condition upon receipt, and the vendor. To place a new ingredient order, go to the next empty row and enter a new order number, and bam, new order row. All of these ingredients are now summed up on the Materials Inventory tab under the Quantity Ordered column. In this case, we have a thousand pounds of beef that we've ordered to date. But unfortunately, we also lose beef as we sell our burgers, which the Quantity Calculated column accounts for. It subtracts the quantity used from the quantity ordered. This calculation is on the production tab, which we'll get to in a minute. As manual inventory stock checks are made, the QA stock column accounts for food spoilage, theft, or otherwise miscounted items. Use the restock requirement section to set the minimum and maximum stock of each ingredient needed on hand every day, plus the delay time and days it takes to restock those ingredients. If the quantity ordered column is less than the minimum, the stock calculated column will be flagged red to indicate a new order is necessary. The storage section indicates where the items are located. If multiple items with the same SKU are in different locations, make a new location ID that's broad enough to encompass all the locations. Last, the expiration section defines the expiration time and which location to pick up from first to make sure the right ingredients are being moved at the right time. For example, tomatoes go bad after a week, so mark the expiration date as seven days, whereas beef can last three to four months. Use the checkbox at the top to indicate the day a manual inventory check was made and the amount of days until the next inventory check is due. The materials dashboard visualizes this data to track top inventory metrics like total inventory value as a pie chart or bar chart and material expiration time. The filters at the top comb through this data by order date or by specific material SKU. In this example, we can see how much beef we have in stock, the last quantity received, the current value ordered, and its average unit price. Below, it's historical unit price, movement over time, 
And total stock quantity over the given filter period lets us assess how quickly we move through our supply of beef and if we need to change our order habits. Remember, if you want to utilize this inventory management spreadsheet to manage your materials, you can download and customize it right now. So how do you account for the menu items you make with all these ingredients? That's where the production tab comes in. Like the material orders tab, first enter the date of production and the product SKU that's being produced. In this case, we served over 50 classic hamburgers on our opening day. Da, 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 da. Under the production row, the material quantities used to make all those hamburgers, like the beef, romaine, special sauce, pickled red onions, and barish bun can all be accounted for. All of these ingredient quantities are then summed in the quantity use column of the materials order tab. The production tab also sums up the unit price of all these materials along with a basic calculation for the average unit cost per quantity made. This can help calculate your food cost percentage at a glance to price your products properly. The product inventory tab counts how many products you've produced with an option to manually count how many have been sold. In the case of our burger joint, these should be the same number, but other industries may produce more items than they sell. So here's a good rule of thumb. If you're producing more burgers than you're selling, you are wasting food. The minimum and maximum stock filters, storage location, product unit value, and expiration date can also be defined for each product in inventory. On the product dashboard, we can select a specific product SKU to assess how many of each product we've produced and the average inventory value. Charts below assess the total value of inventory and production and products based on their expiration time, as well as a table to define the minimum materials needed to make the selected product and those ingredients' current stock levels to make sure you have everything properly stocked. With easy to read charts that organize your inventory management, this dashboard is perfect to solve your inventory management headaches. And remember, you can download and customize this inventory management spreadsheet template in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets right now. Go check out our bookkeeping dashboard spreadsheet template to manage your books as easily as you manage your inventory. Thank you so much for watching.